This is here. It's a terrible time for a mean old man. You got to get to heaven just as fast you can. A long time forgotten about the good old days when a nail and a hammer got a poor man paid. Living in a whorehouse, sleeping with sin. It's a whole lot of trouble and a bottle of gin. Got to get a hold on a good way to feel. Pushes in the full of the driving wheel. They're getting hard on the hand of a long time man. Got Hello, to the welcome to the Forensics Evaluation YouTube channel. So today we're going to be doing some paint correction on a Mark V Golf. Um, R32 model, so kind of, kind of like quite a quick, fast, um, great car actually. This is a four, four motion manual one uh, with sat nav that belongs to a friend of mine and he's selling it. So um, he wants to get the paint sorted out, so that's where I come in. Um, we're going to start with the uh, tooling. Uh, we're going to go through all the toolings and uh, products that I've got here that um, you might want to use. And then we're going to actually look at the um, car to show you the damage. Okay. So starting with tooling, we are going to be using the polisher, the Flex 3401 VRG dual action with fixed rotation polisher that we've talked about in the introduction video is a great kind of hybrid tool that sits somewhere in between the dual action standard dual action polisher with a clutch and a rotary uh, that can do paint correction reasonably quickly um, but it also um, finishes down really nicely and is safe to use so there's the tool the flex 3401 we're also using four inch lake country backing pad pad adapter system and the reason we're doing that is because we're going to be using um, we're going to be using the lake country hybrid hybrid power pads which are these pads here they're five inch pads with four inch backing plates so i think those backing plates are specifically designed for this pad bearing in mind lake county make both of them so um, we have a cyan uh, sorry we have an orange heavy cutting pad we have a blue um, light cutting pad and we have a white polishing pad so this is going to be obviously the white pads going to be in the polish I'm not too sure which of which of these two pads I'm going to be using I think I've got some um, going to have a problem with this car in that it's got the original factory paint over some of it but it looks like it's looks like to me the bonnet on one of the wing has, has, has had paint at some time in its life and usually any paint that's non-factory non-Volkswagen I'm guessing it's going to be softer than the Volkswagen paint and I'm almost certain it will be. So I'll probably start polishing using a blue cyan pad um, just because it's less aggressive than the orange one and we'll see how we get on. And if we're having problems with the correction side we can always ramp up to the orange one but we don't want to be doing it the other way around. So those are the pads we're going to be using on the machine and we've got um, two sets of each. So this should just probably be enough to do the car because um, it's not we're not going to be working these pads too hard on the uh, flex it only cranks up to about 500 revs per minute so it's quite friendly on the pads um, what else will we have we will have some pre-mixed IPA this is mixed down to about 20% IPA to water um, that should be about that should be enough to be able to sort of break down and emulsify the oils when we do inspection passes, when we when we polish a car, and we've we've got oil on, uh, we've got sorry, we've got polish or compound on a particular area. If you wipe that off on its own with just a microfiber, you're actually leaving the oils in the paintwork, which has got a glazing effect. So you want to take all those oils away so you can inspect the paintwork properly. So IPA uh, mix is something that's really handy for when you're doing polishing. In fact, it's essential. The next thing we're going to be doing today, because we're doing what's called two-stage paint correction, we're going to be doing compounding where we where we go in with a more aggressive product to correct damage, and then a second stage where we polish to really flatten that clear coat out and give us that silky, smooth, reflective um, showroom finish. The two products that we're going to be using, so our compound today is going to be sh uh, Skull, or Shoal, however you pronounce it, S3 Gold XXL. So this is a high cut um, polish which breaks down the more you work it to a to a flatter finish. There's so there's a there's less of a step when you're going from the, the high cutting compound to the to the um, to the polish. Um, it's a really oily 
uh, heavily lubricated product that will not dust on you. I find it's great for using on rotaries. Or you can use it on dual action. You can use it. I just find this is a great compound, all-round all compound, especially for someone starting out. You know um, that you can you can overwork the compound without too many implications. Um, you can't say that about every single compound out there. Um, the polish we're going to be using is Skull S40 um, anti-swirl compound, microfine. So basically, this is a polish. This is a this is a finishing polish that will give you that silky smooth reflective finish that we're all looking for. So S3 Gold XXL as opposed to just X3 S3 Gold. Um, this is like a limited edition one that's got more cut and more lubrication. So that's our compound. S40 is our polish. Okay, the next thing is a pile, and even this probably might not be enough, pile of, of high quality Korean um, buffing towels. These are like air, they're so light, they're so soft, they're so safe on paintwork. We're gonna be using these to buff the polish or the compound off of the cars after each pass. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight particular towels in this tub. Um, you know, I use them, you could get through even more. Um, that will probably do the whole car, to, to be honest, but I've got a ton more of them. Why I have a lot of them is when I wipe one particular panel down, I'll then change the um, cloth over to another side because I don't want to be using that same cloth with the polish on it because you're just applying more lubricants back onto the surface. So I'm quite, I get through quite a lot of these. <clears throat> So they are, yeah, now if you watch the microfiber video, they're high pile Korean 70-30 blend edgeless um, buffing cloths. Um, the only other thing to mention, <coughs> I've got just standard APC, uh, diluted right down and a toothbrush. When I finished with a um, particular pad, it's getting, it's getting caked up. I've already cleaned it a few times and I want to move over to a fresh one. I'll rip that off and I'll just squirt it with AC uh, with APC just to stop the um, pad drying out and all the polish kind of powdering up inside the pad and that just makes it easier to clean later on so always have that to hand when you're polishing. Alternatively a bucket of clean water will do just as good job. Um, the other equipment I've got is I've got an extension lead there. I do not want to be messing around with leads. You do not want your lead to your car to be smacking against the clear coat when you're, when you're polishing. It will scratch. The, the lead will pick up dust off the floor and it will scratch the clear coat if it makes contact with it. So try and keep the, the cable, you know, manage the cables when you're polishing. It's important. Um, the other thing that I've got, if I pan the camera over slightly, um, is um, forgive me, it's gonna be a bit wobbly. Where is it? There it is. Okay, so is we've got a pair of halogen um, uh, lights there, 400 watt halogens on a tripod, and we're inside. So, um, the reason we're inside is when you're outside, you can look at the car. The, the guy was there when I was prepping the car earlier on. Um, the first thing he was saying was that after we cleaned the car, he thought it was fine, didn't need any polishing. I said to him, you know, have a look at it when I bring it inside. Brought the car in, got it under the lights, and I'll show you now the damage on the car that we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to cut out here. Okay, guys, so we're off, off of the tripod. I'm holding the camera here, so the audio is probably going to be a little bit more quiet. So let me just zoom back so you can see this car. So this car, this car has been um, washed, you know, snow foamed. It's been it's been shampooed twice and rinsed off both times it's then been decontaminated um, with um, a full out uh, remover uh, built hamber corosol and um, a um, tar and glue you know a sap something to break the sap down i used auto smart tardis which is quite an aggressive one and then i clayed the car and um, then dried the car and brought it inside and I've put some tape over the car. Don't always do this, but time's on my side. So I've put some tape over some of the lines just to 
to protect it. And I've put one tape down the middle because I've said I'd do a before and after for the for the owner. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is the level of damage we're dealing with here. We are dealing with a lot of damage. And I am going to sort of show you um, here. You should hopefully be able to see this once the camera zooms in or focuses, sorry. So just put up the uh, camera focusing uh, in and out. You can see in those halogen lights, when I move away from the lights, there's heavy scratches there. Um, you know, you, you can't see so much over there because we haven't got the light. But you can see all these scratches down here. Massive uh, right there. we got uh, bird poo marring, which is quite deep, but it will all come out. I'm pretty confident that will go. Your general kind of damage that you'll see on a car that's not been particularly well maintained. I mean, you can see these massive scratches there. Your typical spider's web swirling. This is probably, you know, this is not, I've seen worse, but this is pretty much as bad as it gets in terms of paint correction. Um, but there's a, there's some stuff that won't come out. Um, that is not going to come out all of the way, but that will still improve. Um, that will flatten down, soften up a little bit but that will not disappear. Most of the rest of it will come out completely. Um, and it's just as bad, obviously, on both sides. You can really see if I get the camera down here. We are kind of covered in damage. Um, some fluff on the car for the towel, so I'm gonna just get that off, which is a bit of a pain. Uh, but this gives you an idea. Um, this is as bad, bad as bad as it gets. So I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod now and then talk about our approach to how we're going to get rid of all this damage and get this car looking like how it really should look and then we'll, we'll actually do it. Okay. Okay, so just before we start polishing as well, I'm just going to do one more video showing some of the damage. I've just adjusted the position of the halogen so I can get a little bit of a better reflection here going on with the camera. So straight away you can see there we are dealing with quite a lot of damage um, this is all in the section that we're going to be polishing and if i bring the camera back here i'm quite trying to get a good angle here so you can really see that damage it's like it's been painted it's like it's been cleaned with a scour and pad <laughs> um, we've also got some you can see up there right in the middle of the screen now if, once it focuses in sorry just let the camera focus in. It's not going to listen. If I put my finger there, right, it should focus. There we go. We've got some more bird poo marring, which seems to be a real typical thing on this car. We've got some. That looks like stone chips to me. They're not going to come out. Um, and we've got tons of other damage all over the car. So that's just to show you. Okay, so I've got this camera set up, so it's hopefully going to give you a better view of what's going on. It's not an ideal um, setup for me to actually do this correction, but it's good enough. Um, I've got the light there in the background. I'd normally be closer to that light, but um, it's strong enough. And I want, I'd normally turn the main lights off as well, so I just had one light source, really. But it's strong enough for me, for me to be able to see the damage quite clearly, and it helps that it's black paint. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing some correction. Um, before I do, I've also taped up the gaps, which, which again helps. And I've put this towel over the windscreen. Again, if you're laying your, if you're working properly, you shouldn't really be splattering loads of product around. But if you're starting out doing this, or, or even if you've been doing it a while, I just found it takes me, it takes me like five seconds to put a towel over the windscreen. And when you're polishing, polishing the front hood, it just you know, you might you might splatter. I might accidentally lift that that flex up, and and uh, at full speed, it could throw some product around with a rotary. You know, if you lift up at all or get an angle, it will throw. So I just find it for, it's worth doing. Well, some people say, oh, you, you don't need to do that. You know, only amateurs splatter stuff around. Well, you know, if it takes you five seconds to put the towel up, why not? So there you go. Um, you also don't really need to tape if you're laying your product down slowly first and you're putting your film of product over your area you're going to work at 
that product won't be flying around it will just be being worked on the paint but again it can happen um, if you for whatever reason get too much product on the pad and you go over a gap you will sort of uh, force product to catch on the edge and you'll also work these edges harder with a rotary so sometimes I just tape up because it doesn't take long to do so anyway um, I'm now going to bring over the polisher and we're going to get started okay one thing before I start have to hand a trolley with all of the equipment that you're going to be using also have a stall I didn't mention with the list of the equipment with wheels on it so that you can when you're doing the side of the car you can sit on that stall get your back straight and use the tool without having to use this bending over because you just do your back in that's really important but the thing I was going to say is never put this tool on the ground um, the ground of any workshop or, or any environment even outside is where all the dirt and dust is you're walking around you're going to be kicking up dirt and dust and there's a chance of it get, getting grit and dirt on your pad which you do not want um, the risk is very small but it's just a method of working again why do it just put it put it on the trolley put it somewhere clean and put it somewhere safe also if the tool is lying on the ground you've got the cord there and you catch the cord you're going to pull the cord you're going to pull the tool and trip over you're also going to knock the, the pad and the pad's going to hit the, the dirty part of the ground if there's polish on it all of the dirt will just stick to that polish and uh, you're going to get yourself in trouble do not put this on the ground put it in the trolley okay so we now have the camera facing the clear coat so I'm going to be kind of standing working here we're going to normally we'd probably um, we're going to basically we're going to do something a section that's probably bigger than that that we'd normally do I'd probably normally do a section of like about here but what I'm going to do I think is this whole piece the whole halfway so I'm going to break this panel down into three and do from about here across and that's manageable and that's okay um, and I know the compound we're using like I said earlier on doesn't dry out you can overwork it with no consequences or virtually no consequences certainly no consequences to your finish um, spe and especially with the flex you can work the hell out of that s3 compound and um, it will keep going you know so let's get the, the thing so I'm going to try and do this it's really easy to get into the habit of stopping the video every two minutes and because because you want I want to say the right things I want it to be clean etc but um, this is going to be a little bit messy and I'm going to just keep the video running and we're going to um, see how this goes it's going to be lots lots of information hopefully so the first thing we're going to do here we have a a clean in fact this might even be brand new this pad it feels brand new we have a clean pad so before you start polishing you need to prime your pad um, if you don't prime your pad and you just put your polish onto the pad it's going to get drawn into the pad and you won't be doing much so the purpose of priming it is just to make sure the pad is saturated and any future product that you put on the on the pad will stay near the surface of the pad and will actually get worked and do what it's supposed to do um, the second thing is this compound needs to be shaken up all the abrasives in it um, if you could hold them in your hand they'd look like talcum powder are mixed in with um, lubricants but the way they're mixed in that bottle where that bottle's just been sitting there isn't going to be uniform so you want to shake the bottle really well okay that will do so we are going to now put some of this product onto the pad so I'm doing this kind of product in one hand and, and this thing over here which is a bit awkward what I do is I'm going to be doing uh, four bean sized um, dollops of product which is almost a standard that's quite a lot of product um, like I say this pad is bone dry so this is going to be um, worked in so um, four dollops of product when you're priming the pad after that we're going to do three and they're quite big dollops you can see my fingertip against it there so let's just let that focus in that will give you an idea um, once you put the product onto the pad we are then going to put our pad onto the paintwork so let's hope so you can see this there we go our pad is on the paintwork now the first thing you can do wrong here is start working this compound 
or other, you won't see other people putting the compound straight onto the paintwork. If you do that, you're more likely to sling the product all around. So you need to get into the habit or the mindset of, hey, we're gonna lay this product out and then we're gonna work it. So when you lay the product out, you have your speed on the lowest setting and we're just gonna distribute the compound over the car so we've got a clear film of compound over our target area. And I said I'm gonna break this down into a third. So that's what I'm gonna do right now with this product. So we're just laying it down. And I'm gonna get the cord out of the way as well because you don't want the cord going on the paintwork. So I'm just checking you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so that product is laid out in a nice even film over where we're going to polish. So now we're going to up the speed on our flex to somewhere between four and five. So I'm going to start closer to four because I've got a feeling this paint is going to be soft. And I'm going to work this product for between 90 seconds to two minutes. And we'll talk about the technique after I've worked it. Um, um, so let's get working this before it dries up.
Okay.